From Atlanta Studio J, TNT NBA tip-off presented by Auto Trader, Ernie Johnson, Shaq, Kenny. Charles is in Miami to call tonight's Bulls Heat game. And for the next 10 minutes or so, we are going to talk about what all of you have been talking about, election night 2016. Guys, we're going to have to keep this to two, two and a half minutes apiece so everybody can talk. And we're going to start, Chuck, down there in Miami with you. You got the floor. Well, Ernie, it's been kind of shell shock to be honest with you, the last uh, 48 hours uh, uh, with Mr. Trump becoming the president, uh, I was in shock. I'm not going to lie. I was totally surprised uh, at the election results. Uh, that being said, you know, we got to move on. Um, I was disappointed because my candidate didn't win, number one. But like I say, it's over now. He's going to be the president of the United States. We have to respect the office. And we have to give him a chance. Uh, that's the bottom line. We're, you know, somebody always loses an election. You know, we've been fortunate. We won the last couple with President Obama. We didn't win this one. But like I say, I respect the office of President of the United States. And we have to give him a chance. Everything he said in the past, that's water under the bridge. And, uh, we, and we have to give him a chance. And we have to support him because he's the president of the United States of America. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to Kenny now, Jet. Well, I think you know it, again I, we were a lot of people were in shock, but I think the one thing is that you just can't be naive to think that anybody who voted for him is a racist or narcissist or anything other or any kind of ism. But you still have to acknowledge that he made so many of those misogynistic, racist. Uh, remarks and narcissistic remarks. So you have to acknowledge that. And that's what I think disheartening to the people who did not vote for him, like myself, is this disheartening because it, felt, it feels like he enabled the workers, workers of iniquity. The, those people who um, don't really understand the bigger value. And so he gave them a forum and a platform that typically they don't have. And it felt like that you lock arms with them over policy, over your moral line. And I felt that the moral line for me, it wasn't about a Republican vote or a Democratic vote for me, Ernie. Obviously, it was about he had crossed the moral line ethically that regardless of the policies that I wanted to be in place, I couldn't be locked armed with because of those things that he did. And that's where I think, you know, I've been an NBA player and a black man for a long time. And I know how to take a loss. And I know how to get up from a loss and know. But when I'm misled or I feel abused in that process, then I'm going to feel a certain way. And that's what you see the repercussions of what's going on today is the workers of inequity are locked arms with him. And he has to change that. And I'll give it to Shaq. And I think the last thing, he has to change that because he has to make it inclusive. But it's very tough for him because, Shaq, I think this. It's kind of, I, I liken it to the guy who, uh, who's a narcissist in high school and he wins the homecoming king. He really doesn't get humble after that. And so he has to change that direction and be more inclusive for sure. Everyone was in shock, Ernie. We live in a democracy. I'm 45 years old, and the world is more divided now than it's ever been. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's my hope and prayer that him, as the, the, the leader of the free world, bring people closer together. It's kind of hard to believe that a guy with no political experience is the president of the United States. You know, that's what's really hard to believe. And, you know, I agree with Chuck. We have to give him a chance to do his job. You know, candidate Trump made a lot of promises. Now we just hope that President-elect Trump, Trump, soon to be President Trump, hopefully he can make this world a better place for us to live in. But everybody was in shock, but it's over and done. We live in a democracy. He won. He's the president. Now we have to give him a chance. You know, I've got kind of a three-part take on this after, after watching what we all watched on, on Tuesday. Number one, um, when this campaign season started, I, I felt like I'd been dealt a bad hand. Um, I had these couple of choices. And there were trust issues with Hillary Clinton I couldn't get past. And there was this inflammatory rhetoric from Donald Trump, which to me was incomprehensible and indefensible. I couldn't vote for either one. For the first time in going to the polls for 42 years, I hit the write-in button. And I voted for John Kasich. And I left knowing that John Kasich wasn't going to win. But I left with a clear conscience because I hadn't settled. Number two, I'm hopeful. I watched the video today at CNN on what was going on at the White House with Donald Trump, President Obama. I was hopeful and I was encouraged that there will be a difference between the President Trump and the campaigning Trump. 
and I'm with these guys. We have to give them a chance. But here's the deal. I just hope that he's all in, in, uh, in fixing the wounds in this country and the divides that separate this country. And I wanna be part of that too. And for me to be part of it, I have to look in the mirror and I have to say, how am I gonna be a better man? How am I gonna be a better neighbor? How am I gonna be a better citizen? How am I gonna be a better American? How can I be a fountain and not a drain? And number three, I know you're not supposed to talk about politics and religion, but we're already talking about politics and so I'm gonna go the R direction too. I never know from one election to the next who's gonna be in the Oval Office, but I always know who's on the throne. And I'm on this earth because God created me and that's who I answer to. I'm a Christian. I follow this guy named Jesus, you might have heard of him. And the greatest commandment he gave me was to love others. And scripture also tells us to pray for our leaders. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pray for Donald Trump. I'm gonna pray for all those people right now who feel like they're on the outside looking in, who are afraid at this point. Pray for them too. In short, I'm praying for America. And I'm praying that one day we're gonna look back and we're gonna say, you know what? That Donald Trump presidency, that was all right, but I'm praying. Chuck, let's get back to you. Got a couple of minutes left here before we tip off the ball game. Closing thoughts. Ernie, it's been a rough 48 hours. Uh, man, but I believe that good is, you know, unfortunately in our business and the news, we only talk about the bad stuff, but I believe good. Uh, the people have spoken. The people have spoken. My guy didn't win. I'm just going to believe Mr. Trump. You say things to get elected all the time. I, I do believe that. I think people say stuff all the time to win elections. But he's the president of the United States. He's my president. I'm going to always support the president. I supported Mr. Clinton when he was in there. I supported Mr. Bush. Even though I didn't vote for the Bushes, I still respected them as the president because he's the president of the United States of America where I was born. I uh, obviously supported President Obama, who I got great admiration and respect for. And like I say, the election is over, man. And listen, the president doesn't get to make every decision on his own. We got to start holding uh, the, the, the senators and the congressmen, we got to start holding them accountable also. He doesn't get to go in there and do everything he wants to. But like I say, it's over now. I'm going to give him a chance. And that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. But you know what, Ernie? You said something very interesting. Hey, man, we still got to control our own lives. We can't sit around and worry about, say, let the president of Congress and all them solve all my problems. I'm going to do the best that I can do. I'm going to do the best I can do. As much as I love and respect President Obama, I didn't sit around and say, let him solve all the ills that we got on going on in the world. You're right, Ernest. Some of us got to look in the mirror and say, what can I do better? Well, what can I, I do I better? I agree with you, Chuck. And I, I think the one thing is support doesn't mean blind support. It means you can have an insurrection of your ideas with inside of what goes on. And, and it's obvious that one person can make a difference. There are so many people we can point at that says one person makes a difference. And what this did for me, it just made me say, you know what, I have ideas. I, I don't feel any different today, Shaq, than I did two months ago about racism, misogynist views, I, or, or a, les, a lesbian, gay community thoughts about people don't understand those things. I don't feel any different. I'm just gonna speak louder. So you gave, to me, like I said, those workers of iniquity a, a stage, it just makes me speak louder because I could still have my insurrection right in here right now and make a difference because here we are on the stage on national television and everybody doesn't get this. And so I'm going to take advantage that I have this. You know, we live in a world that's really divided now. I would just like to see people come together. Uh, you, you know, I would also like the president to, to you know, Stop doing things, for example, Kenny, in the African-American community, we're all about education. But if you keep taking money away from schools and money away from programs, these kids have nothing to do. So, you know, a lot of stuff is said. So, you know, hopefully we can, you know, get them stuff to do because, you know, when you have an idle mind, Kenny, and you have no guidance at the house, you do things that you're not supposed to do. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully we don't take money away from schools. We don't take money from education. And I just want this guy to do the right thing. And can I give you a high five, hey, Ernie? Because I love what you said, brother. No, let me just make, you make, you. make this one final point. Yeah. Man, we spend so much time in this country talking about black, white, and things like that. The biggest problem in America today is economics. 
giving poor people economic opportunity. People always want to make racism about black and white, Hispanic, Jewish people, Muslim people. The biggest problem in this country right now today is economic racism. We've got to give poor people economic opportunity. And Shaq's point is well taken. we got to give them educational opportunities. Chuck, good talking to you. Enjoy the game tonight. We do have basketball to be played tonight. Chicago All Bulls, right. Miami Heat is game one. And uh, we'll be back right after this.